Yo, 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 welcome back to Car Chats, episode 110. We're about to go live with Maloney. We're going to talk about his new project that he has uh, collaboratively with Prada West called Dose of Some Game or uh, DOSG. Talk about how the response has been to that episode, sponsored by Diamonds Rising, as always. There's the homie. Wait for him to jump in. Yo. Hey, hey, what's good? G? What's going on, bro? I'm just chilling, brother. How you doing? I'm chilling, I'm chilling. It's been a long day, but but we're still here. We're still here. Hey, I feel you, my guy. I feel you. So, uh, before, so everybody that's not tuned in right now, that's watching later, give everybody a little introduction of who you are, uh, where you're located. I mean, I know a lot of people who watch it are going to be familiar with it already, so it's all right. But, hey, man, my name's Malone, Malone depending which which field you know me as. C media personality such as yourself. Uh, do a little bit of you know what I mean? Uh, located in You're cutting out a bit, bro. Cut. No. Yeah. Better? No, it's better? still still choppy. Hold up one sec. Hold up. Hold up. Let me know if that's any better. Yeah, that's better. Is that better? Yeah. Yeah, sorry. I was on my Wi-Fi there. That's what it was. Fair enough. But, uh, uh, yeah, man, MLNY Maloney, depending which field you know me from, MC, producer, um, media person such as yourself, located in Toronto, Bell City. I'd, born. Say, I'd say you're more media person than I am, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm chilling in my car. <laughs> <coughs> hey, you've been killing it, though, man. You've been You've been knocking these things out like crazy, bro. Honestly, kind of remind me of myself when COVID hit. I was like, I was just, I was banging out as many fucking interviews as I could in that period of time when, uh, when the world was getting shut down and shit, man. So I, I, I respect the hustle, man. I respect it. I got some great, some great full length episodes when I did the uh, during COVID and shit, like with like Mass Ace and Words Worse and shit like that. Those were good ones. Ah, uh, Mass Ace, you interviewed Ace? Yeah, I had Words Worse on too. No, man. Told me, man. I've, he's uh, he's actually the most returned guest on Breaking Records Radio. Actually, fun fact. Yeah, I've seen I've seen a few of those episodes myself, bro. <laughs> I always like watching Master Ace and his interviews. Yeah, he's great. He's a he's a great dude, man. He's uh, just knowledgeable, bro. It's just he has a lot of knowledge that like he could tap into a lot of different subjects with that guy. Yeah, and not only that, but he you know he's he's transcended so many generations of hip hop. But beyond that. He's one of those few MCs, like a rare breed, who consistently throughout his career just gets better. You know yeah. what I mean? Where like a lot of artists kind of had their prime. Ace is one of those dudes who consistently pushes the envelope and consistently creates music that's better than music he's made before. You know what I mean? Like there's there's a few of them. You got like Method Man is one of those dudes who Definitely. he might not make music that was better, but he he's consistently his pen gets better black thought consistently his pen gets better ra the rugged man and mass days is one of those royce the five you know what i mean yeah i agree with you on that for sure especially like especially the method man one yeah method man consistently like i don't know many mcs who consistently over decades just gets doper and doper with time you know what i mean like a lot of cats slowly fall off or get lazy method man just he always has great cadence <laughs> that's that's one of those things he, about him man He's got like the cleanest fucking flows ever, man. Like even from yeah. back, back then. What the blood clot is like one of my favorite joints of all time, man. And you just dropped an album, Proud of West yourself, right? Dose of some yeah. game. Yes, sir. Dose of some game out now. We got hard copies if you want them. There's fit. Oh, well, there was, there was a hundred limited hard copies, but they <laughs> very quickly dwindled. 
a hundred, sorry, a hundred limited signed hard copies. They're very quickly dwindling. There are still some left. So hit me up if you want to order yours, get them in before they're gone. And there's a hundred limited copies that are unsigned, which some of those have sold as well too. Because believe it or not, some people don't want the autograph for one reason or another. So, and that's all gravy too. Um, but uh, yeah, both are, both are going. So hit me up if you want to grab yours. It's available on all streaming platforms. Big, big salute to my man, Prada West, man. Um, it's a, it's a project. It's a dope project, man. I'm very proud of it. We got, uh, I mean, on the track list there, Morningwood, uh, produced by myself. And we got Street Life, which is produced by Prada West. Slapping, which is produced by me. Bounce, produced by Prada. And then I did the other uh, the other two joints on there. Or the, uh, yeah. How's the response been uh, streaming-wise? Oh, man. Not that I really, honestly, I don't really give a shit about streaming wise because I like hearing that people are actually buying the physical copies because that's like going directly to you. Like, either way they do it, signed copy or not signed, yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So, it's like, like I, I prefer that over like the streaming things. Like, if you could get the same numbers in selling those as you could in streaming, that'd be a lot better too. But, yeah, no. But streaming wise, how's the response been? Good response? Yeah. Streaming, I mean, streaming wise has been good, man. You know, like, um, everything's uploaded. Um, we put it out through Prada's distribution, so um, he's got like the actual analytics of everything, you know what I mean? I, yeah, yeah, I'm just privy to each platform where, where I can check the analytics out, so you know, and I haven't hit him up for like a, a report yet, you know what I mean? Like, we'll wait a little bit, uh, wait a little bit for that, you know what I mean? You know, I'm not, yeah, yeah, not for sure on all that, but uh. Yeah, man, it's doing good. The reception's been well. Um, you know, like the, uh, you know, people who've been hitting me up saying uh, this or that, and it's crazy because um, we had out, I believe, three, four singles prior. So, fucking with a player video dropped last year. Morning Wood video. Yeah, dropped. I remember. I remember that dropped last year. The first. Yeah, one. morning. Morning, uh, morning wood video dropped last year and uh, slap in a little uh, lyric video that was the first thing we put out um, so you know it was cool because those those got the reception at the time from you know my respective audience and his but um you know he's his his, his shit's been blowing up on the Facebook him and confidential big salutes to both my dudes um, their Facebook shit's been blowing up so they're getting new listeners by the day um, you know my shits you know it, it, it's grown more than what it was at last year so it's just cool that by putting the project out, actually getting reception, new reception to these songs that have actually already kind of had time to exist in the ecosphere, um, it, it's been pretty cool, man. So actually a lot, a lot, a lot of feedback on Morning Wood, believe it or not, which is crazy. Um, because like I said, that video came out last year, but um, you know, you get, you get new ears on it every day. So um, the reception has been beautiful, man. It's been beautiful. And it's cool to hear people's opinions on the new joints that they hadn't heard. And it's cool to hear people's opinions on the, the joints that had previously released that they might not have heard. And it's been cool too, because we put the fucking with a player remix on there, which we got East coast legend, Jay brew on that salute to my man, Jay brew. Jay and Brew's always been one of my favorites, man. Jay brew's good people, man. Me and him have been, uh, me and him been funky since, uh, I had the chance to open for him in Guelph years ago. And uh, me and my boy Jack, who you had on here actually a couple of weeks ago, um, we interviewed him in Guelph at uh, the Our Evolution Studios after the show. And we just, we hit it off well, you know what I mean? He was, he was one of the few cats I interviewed with that I actually kind of kept a relationship with because we just, you know, we got along well. So yeah, um, yeah big salute to Jay Brew. And it's been cool seeing people's uh, reception to like getting, getting the album and being like, yo, there's a version of this record with Jay on it. So. And I mean, the reason why that ended up being a remix is because Jay Brew was originally supposed to be on the record, but Prada was in Ontario and um, I wanted to uh, get some video work in while he was here together. So um, fucking with a player by default, we, we had the record kind of ready um, and we were waiting on Jay Brew. And um, as things started to kind of close up and stuff, I actually thought maybe Jay Brew might not meet meet the deadline for it but he ended up getting the verse in so we we're like well you know so let's we'll still put this out and we were conflicted with <coughs> the album version just kind of being an exclusive and you get the jbrew verse if you get the album and we decided fuck it you know what i mean because we've already put the single out we'll do it as a remix and put that on there so that's uh that's kind of the story of why the remix turned out the way it did 
but you know, just we still get blessed. We still get blessed with the J Brew verse. So yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like you know, it's kind of like you know, it adds it adds a different texture to it. And to be honest, I mean, the whole fucking with a player concept, like J Brew kind of knocked it out the park conceptually. You know what I mean? Like me and Prada kind of just came on there more with bars. Um, J Brew really kind of drove it home. So like. His the the remix with him is kind of really the complete version in my opinion. You know, what I mean, it really kind of full circles the song, and it kind of expands the whole country. You got East Coast to West Coast with me in between in Ontario. It kind of you know what I mean. So it's uh, it's a beautiful thing, a beautiful record, and uh, blessed to have him a part of it. And just to hear people's reception of that too has been cool, man. You know, and like the the album itself with you and Prada, how did that like how that idea come to fruition? It's uh it's. It's kind of crazy, man. Just really organically, though. Like, um, Prada. So me and Prada, funny, like what I said about J. Brew. Um, Prada, very similar situation. He was a dude that I interviewed who we just we got along really well, and he was really down to earth, cool dude. And we just kind of kept in touch. You know what I mean? And um, it was at one point. And I think uh, it might. Yeah, I think it was like the year COVID hit, and um, our label breaking records. We had a goal where we were going to drop something every week for a year. So whether it was me, another label mate, whatever, there was at least a single, a project, or if nothing else, a behind bars or, or a feature that one of us did with somebody else, scheduled to drop every single week. Hey, um, hey salute to uh, Mike, man. Hey, let yeah. me salute. Hey, salute to Mike. Salute to Yee. Salute to Jay Roberts, my man, Jess Z. Salute uh Sorry, man. I, I, I've been seeing you come in. Ah, uh, man. Salute to Mickey O'Brien. A salute to Jesse. Um, hope I didn't miss anybody in here. I'm try I don't want to take too long scrolling up there. But AGP oh. the Don we got in here from uh... AGP. Um, but uh, yeah. Sorry. So um, our goal that year was just to put out a piece of content every week, right? I believe it was 2020 was the year. 2021, whatever. I don't know. Time flies, dog. Especially. Yeah. When um. But, uh, yeah, so that year, I think, you know, I think just Prada had noticed the consistency, whatever. And he hit me up. He's like, yo, let's do a record. And I was like, all right, what you charge? And um, he's like, yo, dog, I hit you up. Like, I'm not looking for money, all right? So I'm like, okay, cool, cool, cool. Lou, you know, I just, out of respect, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, if, um, you know, when people are more established than myself, I don't, you know, I don't expect handouts, you know what I mean? So even though he hit me up, I just, you know, I figured keep it funky. Courtesy. He's, yeah, he's like, no, I'm not looking for that. So I'm like, okay, cool. I'm like, well, how about this then? Let's do a record, and I'll produce a record for you. I'll dig you. I'll, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll produce a record for you. I'll send you some beats. So I sent him some beats. He picked, he picked two beats. So we decided one on the collab, and we decided, you know, and, and the other one was for him. So the first record we started cooking was Dose. That was our collaboration. And uh, from there, one day I'm on Facebook, and uh, I see him do like uh, just like a little like a Facebook video on his phone, and he does it to the beat the other beat I'd given him. And the caption was, "Tell me what you think of this verse. Should I finish this record?" And I and I started to get nervous. You know what I mean? I'm like, "Nah, nah, nah, nah. My beat can't just go. But this, man, that that's a banger. I'm like, yo, that beat can't just go to like a little Facebook video and die there. You know what I mean? So yeah. I up like immediately. I was like, yo, dog, if if you know." If you're having trouble writing the second verse, like if you're kind of not inspired, you know, and you just got the verse down, I could finish the record, you know? And he's like, yeah, yeah, let's see what you come up with. So I'm like, all right, bet. So um, so I went immediately, I just started going uh, to town on that because that was a beat I love. And that record turned out to be slapping. So from there, we had two records. And, um, you know, and they're just both kind of in like their infant stages. <clears throat> and from there, Maybe about like a week. No, probably, that's probably a little generous. Probably about like a month later or so. One morning I wake up and I see Prada post a picture and it's his fingers holding the blunt in him. And it's in the morning and he goes, can't live without my morning wood. And I spit my fucking coffee out. I was like, yo, that's <laughs> fucking hilarious. I'm like, that'd be a funny ass song concept. So I hit him. I'm like, yo, I got this idea from your post. I think this would be a genius song idea. And he's like, yo, I'm about it. I'm like, all right, man. I'm like, well, fuck. At this point, we got three records together. How about how you feel about just doing an EP? He's like, I'm about it, bro. I'm like, dope. I'll send yeah. you packs through. And that's how it was all born, man. He picked another beat, which turned out to be fucking with a player. I custom made the Morning Wood beat specifically for that song. It took me about a month. I kept kept playing with different samples and ideas and just nothing really struck it. And then one day, um, 
I don't even know where I was at, but Praise You by Fat Boy Slim came on. And as um, soon as it came on, I'm like, yo, it's cliche, but it's, it's cliche enough and nostalgic enough. It's got that quirkiness to it. That's the sample. Praise you like a memorial. What? I'm like, okay, yo, this is going to work. So I, I went home that night and fucking cooked the beat up, sent it to him. Uh, added the Barrington Le Levy uh, murderer stabs in it. That's what those reggae stabs in it. The mm, mm, mm. That's uh, okay. the guitar for murderer. And um, and then, you know, and I, I just wanted to add some more quirky flair to it. So I added the, uh, the I want to talk to Samson. Um, the, uh, the, um. Sir Smoke, the Sir Smoke, yeah. like, ha, 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 in there. Yeah, for half bait. Yeah, yeah. but I was just talking. You know, I was just talking to Jack Ellenson about half bait the other day. Weird. <laughs> Fucking weird, bro. <laughs> yeah, no, I was telling him. I was talking about the part where it's like I was talking about memory for some reason. I was like, all I think about when I think of memory is half bait. When I was like, marijuana affects the memory, and I'm like, fuck. <laughs> but yeah, my bad, my bad. You in here for some weed? You have a stuck dick for crap. <laughs> this shit's classic, bro. That, that shit is classic, bro. But yeah, man, so it all came together super organically. So I, I, I tailor-made Morning Wood, and um, fucking with a player was the last beat of mine he picked. And then he hit me up. Before we are I don't know, because um, I think when I pitched the Morning Wood, I just pitched the beat, and then I was the first to write to it. So then, um, given that I did the, the Samson samples in there, I made sure to kind of include that in my verse and then he did the flip around and did the i'm about to go get lifted from m-e-t-h-o-d man and he he slipped that in his i'm like okay dope dope so um yeah man and then he pitched two records before i think before we were finished fucking with a player and before maybe he had written his morning wood verse he said hey how about i pitch a couple joints 100 so he pitched bounce and street life which he already had the hooks and the verses down on them he just left an open verse on him so i just filled the space Word. Yeah, it's a very organic yeah. uh, creation. That's those always come out those always end up being some of the best ones always, you know what I mean? Sometimes some people just do some stuff on the spur of the moment, it ends up good, but like other people were just like here and there like putting shit together and like like not a not a long period of time, but enough time that it was able to create like something that you're proud of, you know what I mean? Not just something on the speed or the moment, just to be consistent. Yeah, well, and that was an important thing to both of us because we're both consistent ass artists and yeah. we got solo shit going on constantly so for us the the main objective was like let's just make it make sure it's dope you know what i mean like fuck fuck rushing it to get it out for the sake of getting it out like even the ep itself dog we've had hard copies since last time he was in ontario um we got him printed up before he was here so we could sign them together so what was that like march you know what i mean and um the EP itself really has been finished since uh, tail end of last year. You know, once J. Brew got his verse in, I mean, project was ready to go. Um, but it was just about timing and making sure everything made sense, right? We put the singles out last year to kind of generate buzz and, you know, get the uh, get the get the idea of it born and bubbling. And then, you know, and then we both kind of just we got the project pretty well well finished and then we just kind of went our respective ways we had other things both lined up and we're you know like let's hammer those out and execute them the way that we want to do it you know and then we can focus on the project and kind of you know get this out properly and do it right you know what i mean so we actually we had a uh, another dope plan for the project but it, something got fucked up in the distribution process so we weren't able to uh execute it properly i'm not going to go in details about that because uh you know, we're going to try to trigger that next time. But aside from that, man, you know, everything, everything came together beautifully. And do you guys have any tracks that you did that are unreleased from, like, you putting on the EP? Do you have any collabs in the works with them still? Or No, you know what? I'll tell you one thing about myself artistically. I can't speak for Prada, but I can speak for myself. If it ain't dope it don't even get to the studio bro you know what i mean like if i record something it comes out unless i do a feature for somebody and they for whatever reason don't put it out it's very rare i do a record that doesn't see the light of day very 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 rare and i mean in my whole recording career um i've maybe recorded maybe five songs maybe six that never saw the light of day word maybe so 
Uh, um, yeah, I just, I know, cause I think that's the one kind of blessing to not having a recording studio at home is that you have to, you know, like if you're going to take time of your day to go hit the studio and pay studio time, do whatever, um, you know, for it to even get to that point of the process, it's gone through so much um, screening, you know what I mean? That it's like, you know, it, it yeah. t make it to the studio if, it, if it's, you know, not good enough to, for me to put my name on and put out. Who's All up? Right. <laughs> Thanks for that. Uh, but as for like after like this project, do you have anything yourself coming out next now though? Like solo? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I got I got a lot of shit in the works, man. I got a lot, a lot, a lot of shit in the works. Um, I mean, realistically, I, I guess I could really like put put names on it. I just can't tell you exactly when it's coming out. Um, but I mean, I got the rollout plan for the rest of the year. Um, really, really lined up. So from now till December is already spoken for. Um, you're not gonna get an album in between then. You know, like let's like let the Prada project live and just keep playing the singles game. But I got two albums two solo albums that I've been working very hard on behind the scenes for a long time. Uh, one is called The Maturation, which basically, without giving too much away, is a, is a story that plays out a 24-hour period of my life, which was like um, a very, very uh, self-realizing time of my life. And a lot happened in a very condensed period of time. And um, so the whole album really is, is a story of this 24 hours that kind of really opened my eyes and changed my life um, a lot. And a lot of soul searching came from. So I, that, know, I know the last two years were rough on you for uh, particular reasons, too. If I'm, uh, yeah, and, and I'm pretty sure. to be honest, that I don't touch on any of that on this album because the maturation actually really this 24 hour period takes place in... Um, 2016, 2015, 2015, no, 2016. So I, we're going, end of the year, 2015, 2016. I I would have to mark the date exactly that this transpired. But so it's it's it predates my mom passing and my child being born, and uh, all that stuff. But it's a uh, it's a very eye opening uh, period of my life, and um and I think you know it leaves the potential for a maturation two to happen which would chronicle that period um where a lot of life-changing altering moments happen in a very short period of time um so you know and i already have songs actually written for the maturation two. it's just you know will i sit on them that long or will i put them out prior who knows um you know who knows the maturation has been such a long process in the working it's one of those things i want to be perfect so it's uh it's uh like it's been like 98 percent done for over a year it just i want that, that last two percent to be perfect you know what i mean so um either way that's one thing i got working on um some songs have already come out as singles um you know and and you know taking them in as songs you wouldn't realize that they're part of this over this 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 larger story but uh anyways that, that album's in the works, and then I got an album called Iacom in the works, which is very collaborative, very collaboration heavy. Um, it's, it's really been um, me really kind of transforming from a beat maker to a producer. Like, it's the best production I've ever done as a, as a producer. Uh, really, you know, incorporating a lot of fresh elements as a producer, like bringing other producers in, bringing other instrumentalists in to really kind of complete the vision of each individual song. The, the album itself doesn't have a concept like the maturation, but the whole album is very collaboration heavy. And uh, the name Iacom is an ode to my original rap group before we started breaking records, was a group called Iacom. Uh, rest in peace, my brother Le Jack Hellen was a part of Iacom. He was known as Juice the Iacomplice once upon a time. Um, the other half of the OB, Skylar Danes, he was, uh, he was my original mentor in this music shit. He was a part of Viacom. He got us our earliest gigs. Our He's a dope gigs. artist as well. Skylar yeah, Danes is very dope. Up, man, big salute to Skylar Danes. Um, you know, uh, Lipinski, rest in peace. He was, uh, he was a part of Viacom. 
Um, and then you got like, you know, you got some came and went and, uh, you know, and you got some honorary members too. Santoro was a part of Icon, big salute to him. Um, you know. Yo, yo Malcolm, man. Yeah, like you can leave your opinion, bro, but hit my messages because I, I, I have more of a relationship with each artist I interview than, than you'd actually think. So you should, uh, instead of just because I know you're probably on your sobriety journey and I respect it and congratulate you, bro. If I'm going to smoke a spliff when I'm doing a, a, an interview series where it's very energy based and not scripted and it's all based just off general topics and what i'm asking them i'm i'm gonna do it but like i got i got all good with your opinion bro but like just if if you want it to be seen that bad just message me bro i didn't delete any what are you talking about i've never interviewed you you know what man don't I, worry about anyways okay if you can, you can do your job while you're under the influence i got nothing against it bro i, I can tell you this I usually have a couple of drinks every time I interview somebody I'm nervous about. And you know what? It's gone great, but it's also gone horrible, dog. You know what I mean? So it's a learning curve, dog. You know what I mean? You're going to figure out what you come <clears throat> with. What, the what thing you're... is, this is this is like, this is one of those series where it's not like what I'm doing on the other one, like the full length ones. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, at the so, end of the day, dog, just do what, whatever's going to you, man. You know, I, and I, I ain't judging. I ain't no, judging. I know that, bro. Like, I might smoke a spliff myself. <laughs> I'm smoking butt brown. The fucker, dog. I interviewed MC Shannon. Probably smoked a whole pack of smokes for the two hours that I was talking to him. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You want to be? But no, definitely doing your interview. You know what I mean? It's all great. And I'm known. And I'm known of Maloney, but before I've interviewed him. So I mean, like, there's another thing. So hey, it's all, and it's all good, man. But. Hey, Malcolm, salute to my, to my G, you know what I mean? Yeah, and like I said, I'm not even mad at the comment. I'm just letting him know. If you wanted to say something, just hit me up. Hey, man, you know? Oh, make another interview with them and do it and, and just make sure you stay sober or something, you know what I mean? And, you know, whatever, you know? You this, time, this time I will, just for him. You tailor it to each thing, right? You know what I mean? Like, you know. And I didn't, <laughs> and I smoked this in my last episode, not, not while I was talking to you. I was smoking cigarettes with you. But you know what's funny, <laughs> though? Like, you know, you'll, 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 like, I can give you a couple stories, man. You know what I mean? Like, whatever. It's not really anything. Like, I'll tell you this. Locksmith, when we interviewed him, he doesn't like smoking and shit, right? So he's one of those cats. So it's like, okay, cool. Respect it. But we were vaping. And um, he didn't say nothing to us. But uh, afterwards, he had told the promoter, that like he had made like a, a comment to them like uh some shit like um yeah fuck i could hardly breathe up there they kept blowing vape in my face you know what i mean like we didn't blow <laughs> the guy's face but you know it's one of those things where you look back and you're like yeah you know what maybe you know maybe that was uh a tad unprofessional or, or disrespectful or you know and but i mean that was the aesthetic we we, we were trying to start a show called the hip-hop chop shop and this right. was Jack Hellington, actually. Salute to Jack. And we were doing it at his place. And uh, we never really ended up getting past, like, two or three episodes. So we ended up just releasing them as regular interviews. But, um, but yeah, Locksmith was one of them. And, uh, you know, it's just one of those things, man. It happens. You know, I can tell you another thing. I, uh, when I interviewed Main Source, um, they appreciated how, how much I loved the, the culture and the music and the history and, like, the nuanced things that I knew. But I was amebriated on my fucking face, dog. I can't even watch that interview without being embarrassed. Like, because I'm just like, yeah, yeah, like, like you can hear the drunkenness in my voice. You know what I mean? And they were, man, they were so cool that they invited us to uh, come to that club nest with them after to uh, Mishimi's birthday bash. And like, we got to go in the club with them, like no security check, nothing. We're backstage. Like I had a bottle of, I had fucking like 60 of vodka in my backpack. I didn't even check my bag. And then like, we're backstage and the <laughs> bottles of gray goose free drinks are flowing i got so drunk i fucking passed out with my fucking hand in my fucking my head in my hand dog my girl had to carry me out of there um and get me in a cab and shit i got absolutely destroyed i was destroyed before we went to the club you know what i mean but shit yeah. you know what i mean it's part of, it's part of the game man shit happens you know what i mean i'm never gonna judge nobody on some shit it's like you know because i've been there you know so and and most of the people that have been in those situations 
conversations with, you know, were respectful enough to not like hold it against me. So I would never hold that shit against somebody, you know what I mean? Unless, you know, unless they are like blatantly disrespecting me or like somebody I was with or something, you know? Yeah, no, most definitely. And like I said, I appreciate his, his, his comment. Like there's no, there's no love loss here. I just, maybe I am too high. Maybe I don't remember interviewing him, but I just went back through the episodes so I could get them all on YouTube and, and I didn't see his name pop up unless he changed the name and it's a different name. Maybe that happened. But re you know, irregardless, I'll, I'll message him and sort it out. You got the positive energy going, man. That's the most important thing. You know, I find like you got two personality types in this game. You get people who will take accountability and want to correct things and you get people who you can't tell them they ever did anything wrong. You know what I mean? And you're not the second type. So you seem easy to work with, easy to deal with, and um, you know I think I think you guys can correct this thing. It doesn't seem like it, it's beyond that. No, de most definitely not. I appreciate that, nonetheless. And uh, my bad. Uh, so you have those two projects that you're saying you're still trying to like that, like the that two percent perfected and whatnot. Do you have yeah. uh, any more any more videos with you and Prado going to come out for that project? No, I'm going to do a couple little promo things for like the. Uh the the records we didn't do videos for um because right. i actually did if you watch the the fucking with a player video i actually you know like back in the days music videos how like near the end they would split and give you like a preview of another record yeah we did that and i actually there's a there's technically a music video at the end i of just play a, i just suggested that oh. idea to another artist for his for his because he just dropped an album and he was asking what videos you should do them for and i'm like well do it like back in the days yeah but, you know, like dip set, dip set type shit. <laughs> yeah. Earlier this year, actually, and something up, but initially the plan was the Andrew Tate video. It was B side, a ultra video. So they were the same video. You know what I mean? But they it split halfway through because they're both. What those are, it's the intro and the outro to my Icom album. So, like, the whole album is very collaborative heavy. We got some pretty dope features on there. Like, I got Al Gaunt from JMO Gang. I got DJ Eclipse on there. I got um, Self Titled on there. I got Young Stitch on there. Confidential's on there. Um, Prada West is on there. Kripal's on there. Special K's on there. Um, I know I'm missing names um there's a couple other features i got but i don't know if i'm gonna put them on that or icom 2 because i have started working on icom 2 so we'll see but there's some other legendary um names as well that could land on there um but yeah man it's, it's pretty stacked album and then plus lots of like you know people in our in you know kind of in our our um our ocean as, as well too here you know what i mean like a lot a lot of um Ontario cats and different cats from Canada and stuff who are kind of in our same playing field on there. Um, really too many to name, there's tons of dudes, but salute like Chief Recca, B1 The Architect, AR, Adam Robbins, um, you know, Conan Doyle, um, shit, Cody Nash, um, my brother Scott Free breaking records, my brother Chris Thomas breaking records, um, you know, got some additional production with the homie um, DV dreams on there got some instrumentalists involved like there's there's a there's a lot that's going into this album it's very collaborative it's really just trying to make the best music i can possibly make and the best part that you know i think the i think the great world of art is and to me that very very important i had last year was understanding my bring parties to involve them in records where, you know, something else that, that, you know, I could do it, but someone could do it better. You know what I mean? Right. And so, yeah. So that being said, Andrew Tate and MK Ultra were two of the solo songs on the album, the first song and the last song. And so I actually made a paired music video for them. Problem is we paired up with this company who was launching and, um, they, they had DJ Who Kid involved for their launch. And it was supposed to be a thing where you get, like, exclusive music and your fans can pay, um, you know, very minimal amounts and get exclusive content. But uh, they kind of dropped the ball on the release and the launch. And um, I didn't really want to split the music video to begin with. The whole idea was to release it as a paired video. So when the ball got dropped, I, I wasn't upset with them. You know, shit happens. But I just, I respect respectfully decided to take my you know 
take my destiny back into my own hands and just say, you know what, I'm just going to do things the way I want to do them. You know, thanks for the opportunity. Yeah. It, it didn't work, work out. And uh, Sometimes you got to do that, bro. Yeah, so unfortunately, the video does not exist it, the way it was meant to be seen. It's, it, it exists in two parts. But I actually think Pac of the Plug might put it up on his channel as the full video. So um, it should be available pretty soon, actually. Looking forward to it. Let me know when it drops so I can post it on the pages, like everything. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. I mean, both parts of the video exist just separately. Like Andrew Tate's its own video and MK Ultra's its own video. But, uh, but yeah, I, I do want to put the the paired video out too, because I mean, realistically, that was that was the direction and the vision for it, right? All right, I hear you. And what about media wise? What what do you have? Any any special announcements for breaking records right now that you have that nobody or maybe some people are aware not everybody yeah well i mean i can't talk about interviews that haven't happened yet i made that mistake once when i was supposed to interview snoop dogg and then the promoter didn't pay him and we got to london and there's nobody at this venue and we're like what the fuck is going on and um a salute to jay roberts too he's yeah got, man he's got, got a, 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 a listening a, party tomorrow he, he's got a verse on something crazy we're cooking it's not on either of those albums it, it's on something else that's special mm. that's coming but uh it's jay dope. roberts is dope and he has his listening party tomorrow with uh imperative yeah he does actually lay low brewery so go go yeah. check if you're in the toronto area unfortunately i don't think i'm gonna be able to make it if i can i'll be there but uh, i don't think i can but uh wishing nothing but the most success and shout out to lay low brewery too it's a fucking dope ass venue man so if anybody's in the toronto area that's the spot you want to be real hip-hop you can buy dope art there and shit it's just very 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 hip-hop vibe in that spot you know and the perfect place for a release party like theirs because the, that's just just that that real underground grimy hip hop. Yeah, yeah. Jay that's, Roberts is definitely a dope artist, man. He's definitely I'm dope. Getting into that Irish, so like I gotta love that. Yeah, man. So, yeah definitely, bro. Same here. That's why <laughs> it's the first time I was spoke with them in our interview about was the Irish background. Say what, sir? The first thing I spoke with Jay, Ro Jay Roberts in our interview was about his Irish background. I was trying to figure out where he's from and shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just getting a bunch of Irishmen on my shit lately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to get Everlast up on you now. Yeah, fuck. <sighs> no, Everlast yeah. interview. I'd love to interview Everlast. I mean, he gets hated on too much, but he was dope. Man, Everlast, like, ah, whatever, man. I'm not here to talk <laughs> last but uh yeah man no the media thing um i got some cool interviews lined up i'm back i'm i'm get i'm getting reamalgamated back on my bullshit um i took some time off because really i'm just trying to rebrand the breaking records radio brand like i made a conscious decision about a year ago that i didn't really want to do it as an online radio show anymore like i still do i still put the episodes out to the networks when i make them salute to uh, you know big big salute maximum fm big big salute to 504 online um but the kind of the show is almost kind of almost more of like an exclusive now like when you know what i mean but when i'm rolling out content and i'm getting new content then it then it's steady but uh realistically that's not really the direction i'm, I'm going with it anymore it's more an online media brand is really what i'm trying to do so i just launched the new rap nerd show um the first two episodes are out now anybody watch yeah. You can go to Breaking Records Radio if you're on Instagram after this. That's W R E C K O R D S. That's how we spell records because we reckon these motherfuckers, you know. But <laughs> uh, you can go on there, link in the bio for the first two episodes. We did Rusty Jux and Illa G when they were in Toronto. So those are our first two episodes. Great interviews. Um, we I had some great conversation with them earlier in a couple months back. Yeah, yeah, man. And then we got. Uh, we got the Royal Flush interview uh, dropping for episode three of Rap Nerds this Monday. And then the following Monday, we got the Atmosphere interview dropping for episode four. And then by that time, there will be a few more interviews in the tuck. But until they've actually happened, I'm not going to speak of them because I, I learned, I've learned that lesson the hard way. Made a, I made a post years ago on the way to go interview Snoop Dogg. And then we got there. And he hadn't got paid, so he was on his way to the hotel, and the whole shit was a disaster, dog. We end up interviewing like some like Snoop Dogg's nephew, and like the guy like said like five words during the interview. Then we interviewed some other guy who was on the tour roster, and it was like <laughs> lit. And then we end up um, interviewing Grace from CP24. Rest in peace. She passed away recently, which was pretty cool actually interviewing her. 
but you know she was randomly there with the uh, publicist and it, it was just yeah. it was just a nightmare of a night and not only that but i'd like i'd made a post yo going to interview snoop dog like, fucking like 400 likes and shit and yeah. it was embarrassing <laughs> shit. it's like yeah that interview never happened so i learned my lesson then you never speak about something until it, it's it's it, it, it yeah. fits. That's, it was, it, I think that that's like one important rule for media guys, like for artists. I think. It's too many either. Artists. Yeah. Oh no, for sure, artists too. Definitely. That that should go without saying. <laughs> I, this dog. Somebody hit me up for a collab, asked me my price. By the way, it's two hundred dollars. If anybody wants to work, hit me up. Um, same with beats, two hundred bucks. Um, you know, and I, and I, I, I'm easy to work with. We do bundles, with all that good stuff, whatever. Um, but. Uh, yeah, man, he hit me up, asked me my rate, whatever, told him. He's like, okay, cool, I'm going to hit you, like, this Friday. And he starts, like, putting out artwork with a song title and all this stuff and, like, tagging me in it. And, like, I just didn't like the posts and shit or interact with him because I'm like, this, this song doesn't even exist. And then he's, like, hitting yeah. me, asking me, like, if I want to go perform this record with him at the show. And I'm like, dog, you haven't even, you haven't even solidified the feature yet. <laughs> like, so, I don't know, man. It's like, yeah, it's like that, that as, even as, a, as an artist you gotta learn that lesson and even then like even when you do secure something you don't always want to let people know everything you know what i mean like sometimes when i lock something in and, it, and it's and it's underway and i know it's solid i'll promote it early and let people kind of get an early glimpse that like this is happening in the future but there's stuff i'm sitting on dog that nobody has any idea of you're the first person i told about the el gaunt record the dj eclipse record you're the first you're the first time i've been vocalized that and I've, I've been sitting on that for a year easy i like getting these exclusives yeah well i mean it, it, it's close enough to the time where it's going to come out now and i can start promoting it soon enough that i'm okay letting it out the bag right but it's like you know you don't always gotta let people know what the fuck you're doing you know what i mean it's important some my last my last guest said he keeps a lot of the shit to his chest but doesn't really let anything out of the bag like you said yourself yeah man i think like like, you know, and, it, and it's an important, it's important to do both. It's just important to know when to do what, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's chess, not checkers. Exactly, man. Everything is chess. I view everything like chess. I'm always like, I, some, some of the, some of the, some of my homies and shit, they're like, yo, dog, you're way too over analytical. Like you look at shit way, like, you're, and it's like, nah, like I obsess over this shit, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. My life. You. And you know what I mean? It's like, and uh, once I decided to take another stab at it, Cause I'd almost quit rapping, man. I pretty well, I pretty much hung in my gloves, um, and I was just, I was comfortable just being a media person. And then uh, he passed away, and so I had to make a record for him. And in doing that, Ennis kind of got re inspired again, who's been like my engineer for years. So yeah, I'm familiar with that. I definitely tapped him. He's a dope engineer for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but. That's a that's another important thing, man. As an artist, once you find an engineer, you you never let that shit go, man. That's a special relationship and and a bond yeah. that can't be replaced. So when yeah. he was active for a while there, and I was kind of zoning more into doing media, and I was seeing more fruits for my labor from that. And uh, hip hop is in a weird space in that time, man. This is the same time like the maturation. Uh, that stuff was happening in my life. I was going through some personal turmoil. 2016, a lot of crazy stuff happening. You know, I was kind of stuck in this place between two relationships and two different girls in different cities. Um, I kind of got back into doing drugs again. Um, I, I, I just in a really fucked up place, man. You know what I mean? Um, then Lipinski passed and uh, a lot of learning happened at that time, but like, I was I was very unmotivated and hip hop was in a weird spot then man like um very weird like I, I wouldn't even front I went to OVO Fest the year that uh he had the CN Tower for the prop um yeah and I actually I mean mind you I was drunk as shit but like I cried at this show because he brought out all these special guests and there was maybe two that I was happy to see French Montana and Nelly Aside from that, like, you brought up Cardi B, Migos, and, like, me now, dog, I'm not a hater. You know what I mean? Everybody has an important place and role in hip-hop, and I respect it. But at that time, I was very more kind of, like, on my underground boom bap. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I was still very much kind of that that mindset. And I actually cried at this event, bro, just seeing people go crazy over just what I looked at as, like, mindless music. And I was like, dog, there's not a place for me in here anymore. 
And that and that night, kind of like I was like I just kind of was like, yo, I'm kind of done with this. And then the passing mixed with a couple of things like the rise of some some other artists, like seeing kind of junk start to get his flowers, seeing dudes like Stitch kind of start to get his flowers. Yeah, man. Um, me and Stitch go way back too. Fuck me and Stitch go way back. Yeah, but like, like seeing cats like who who could rap rap yeah. and get like props for rapping. Hell yeah. That paired with me kind of having to find a new studio to go to to record the Lipinski song and stuff kind of got me back motivated. And then once I started again, I was like, yo, I'm doing this for Lipinski and nothing can stop me. We're going to we're going to put all the chips in. You know what I mean? We're going we're going all in this time around. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But at least I can never look back and say I didn't try. And I've never let my foot off. You know what I mean? Word up, bro. And that's sometimes that's the type of inspiration you need, you know? Yeah. It's heartbreaking and unfortunate as it is. Sometimes that's the biggest motivator people get. Yeah, man. Well, Lipinski, that was my dude, man. Like, that was, like, that was my, my guy. Like, like when I when I started rapping, yeah, I started, like, I mean, I started rapping in grade school. Nobody else rapped, you know what I mean? So, like, I had, like, kids in my, like, I had, like, a rap group back then in grade school with, like, nerds because, like, none of the cool yeah. kids that, like, I was friends with wanted to fucking rap. But, like, I could find some of the nerdier kids in class who I got along with who, like, you know, like, they were down. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, kind of like something edgy for them it never it never formulated nothing because they would only write one or two verses so like yeah. I, and i was always a visionary dog i like i'd be like yo our album's gonna be called this and we're gonna have these songs <laughs> i always you know what i mean i always like trying to put something together um that didn't work then i had another rap group early high school these guys were actual rappers uh, and we made some mixtapes and shit but like they were like burnt cds where where you would yeah. strip the track list on each one <laughs> sold or gave away, you know what I mean? Real old school. Some of those are still That's floating. when I, it's the era I was making music in too. Yeah. <laughs> still floating around the Memorax era, you know what I mean? Like some of the yeah. um, Dirty Fire Rap Crew. That was our group name, man. And uh, there's still some <laughs> Fire mixtapes floating. Every once in a while, I guess someone messaged me and they'll, and they'll bring up a line from one of them old tapes. The Dirty Fire <laughs> Red Action mixtapes, you know. Um, but really, when I st like really started to take rap serious, serious, I mean, I always took it serious then, but I sucked. We all sucked, kind of, you know, and we're recording on like a sound, a shitty fucking um, one of those, um, those, those old webcam mics, you know? So, yeah. On the stand, I used to have one of them set up in my parents' basement. We'd record on sound recorder. So I had this like boom, box, <laughs> and I would hook up the boom box through an aux cord to the computer, play <laughs> instrumentals off it close to the mic and we'd record it through the two dollar mic yeah. and i had a system down where it sounded good enough i mean you go back and sound <laughs> shit but like it sounded good enough <laughs> you know what i mean and that's how we made these mixtapes and um and uh yeah from there then youtube came around and then that's when it really started to take this shit serious because we started yeah. videos on youtube and they started gaining traction and then i went into the studio my first time and the first song i ever recorded was a diss record called Truth or Dare to a group called Get Steady. Uh, put it up on MySpace and the shit exploded, man. Like, next thing you know, like, I'm out getting groceries and people are like, yo, you that Maloney guy. And, uh, like, it was crazy. Like, and... Um, yo, MySpace did a lot for artists, bro. When it was happening, like, when people, when, like, you were making numbers on MySpace and shit, like, people were recognizing you and shit. Like, it's crazy. Dog, that's how Drake got discovered, man. I just yeah. wish, I wish I understood the power of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I didn't. I was still in an amateur phase. I was still in high school, dog, you know? But yeah. that being said, that's kind of where I, my lineage comes from. You know what I mean? That and yeah. that, battling, you know, that's what you did back in the day. You battled. You go to a high school football game, one of the other high school, you know, they have football yeah. night on Sunday. You know what I mean? Especially when school just started. Oh, man, them shits was popping. You had girls everywhere. Yeah. You had, you had the, you know, the grade nines up to the grade <laughs> 12, the, the victory lappers, everybody. There, you know, simpler and, times, oh, brother. Simpler yeah, times. Twenty year olds are out there with their whips, their Honda Accords, selling drugs and shit. You, everybody, <laughs> you know what I mean. So like that. It was a melting pot. That's what we used to do, man. We used to go out and battle. Thirty five. Yeah. Salute to my man Baz. You know, <laughs> six piece. That that was that was our shit. Um, but yeah. So you know, that's that's really where I pick up my chops. But Lipinski comes into play. Um, I met him met him when I was like fourteen. We both related loved rap so we would just get together and freestyle all the time and just get drunk and freestyle yeah. then um he was actually originally a member of dirty fire he was and same with another dude named kenny totten and then they uh 
they formulated this beef against me. So me and Lipinski didn't talk for a few years. And once I started putting out uh, records on MySpace and they were gaining traction and I uh, had a couple YouTube videos, Lipinski just popped by my parents one day. He's like, yo, yo, I'm still rapping too, dog. And I'm like, okay. And once me and him <laughs> clicked back up, dog, never looked back. We were just, we were that motivating force for each other. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we come over, he would show me his new shit and I'd be like, <sighs> God damn, I got to step my game up. Fuck. You know what I mean? So I would hit hard. Like, next, you know, next month I'd be trying to write crazy shit, you know, and you're just like remembering the shit he spit to you. Yeah. Right? Like, there's no evidence of it. You just remember those bars. You're like, oh, I'm going to get him on this. And the next time he comes, you're like, yo, peep this. And literally, that's how, like, the early Icom days was. It was just all, you know, trying to outdo each other. And Lipinski was my biggest motivator. It was me, me and him all the way. And, uh, so to lose him was really, I don't know, man, you know, we'd be kind of, we kind of become removed from each other in the sense of like, he kind of gave up on the dream and I didn't. And then I moved out and he stayed home and dealt with his own demons there. Um, but, but, uh, uh, you know, we would have conversations every once in a while and he was working on some stuff, which ended up being his isolation album that we put out after he passed. Um, but we were always that, you know, that motivating force for each other. And when I lost him, I had to try to find that muse, like, in other places. Yeah. But um, really, that's how I became so competitive, because I had to find that muse and people who didn't know that they were playing that game with me. So at all times, I, there's somebody, like, in Canada or, like, in the circuit of, like, you know, in the realm of reach who's maybe doing better than me, that is always my target. And they don't even mm -hmm. know but I, I'm always targeting somebody and watching mm. what they're doing and being like, okay, they did this. I can do something, but I can do something better. You know what I mean? So I'm always a, in competition with it's people. It's a competitive game by nature, bro. People, yeah. people should be well aware of that, but if they're not, they're sleeping. So. Well, exactly. And that's, you know, steel sharp and steel, right? So I'm yeah. always in competition with people, whether they know it or not, even like people I'm cool with, you know what I mean? And I'll tell them, I'll be voicing yeah. for them and be like, yo, you know, yeah. right? Like, <laughs> oh, okay, that, that bird. <laughs> Hot, but yo trust me I'm, I'm a cook i'm a cook you're gonna be you know and i think that's why you're well respected within the, especially the canadian scene but i'm i'm sure with your fans from wherever they're placed at wherever your demographics are they're well aware that your pen game is very sharp i have, to me that's the most important thing man you know if, rapping is easy that's the one thing i've always said rapping itself is easy you yeah. can memorize words and if you try hard enough, you can learn to flow to a beat. And the reason I say that is because I was not born able to flow to a beat. If you go get a Dirty Fire mixtape or even further back, those yeah. shits, the sound recorder shits, I did not have flow, my dog. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's something you teach and learn yourself. You know, maybe you have to love this shit and study the greats and really love what you do. Yeah. But it's something anybody can learn. And I guess it's the same with a guitar or anything, right? But it's... Rapping, I feel like the bar is set so low for what your, your, your physical talent has to be that your pen has to be superb. You know what yeah. I mean? I hear cats and if they, like, if you don't make me, like, screw my face up or, like, double think in a verse, I'm just like, nah, I'm good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's back, but it's like, it, it, this guy's not that nice. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't mean to be, be a hater. It's just, you know, to me, that's, that's what you're judged on, dog. You know what I mean? Like, that's that's where your skill shines through, you know. But everybody got I feel you. different flavors for different haters, right? So definitely, I hear you. But I don't want IG to cut us at the hour mark, so I'm gonna let you do an outro. Let you say any links or anything you want to push before we take off. But for, I want to say appreciate you coming on for episode 110, bro. You come on whenever you want. You know, chop it up, no hip hop, doubt. talk whatever. You know what I mean? I'm always down to chop it up with you. And uh, yeah. Anyways, that incident before, I wasn't trying to in interrupt on our conversation. I just wanted him to know, like, yo, hit me up. We could talk about it. I just don't want to keep getting flooded with comments because I'm like, fuck. Like, <laughs> nah, man. But I appreciate you coming on, bro. Like, I, I, I like having a conversation with you. You're a solid dude. I've been I've listening to your music well before this conversation. So, like, and, I've, I've been a fan. So, and cool. that album, I'm looking forward to listening to the full album or EP when I get it. I'm looking forward yeah. to hearing it. Yeah, I got one coming for you, my G. And um, yeah, man, Lou, for what you're doing here, man. Like I said, I 
the, the yeah. very reminiscent of you know me in certain periods and uh you know and i know that in somebody i uh you know i think whether people like me or dislike me one thing they can't say is that there's too many people that work a whole lot harder than me you know what i mean so i uh you know when i see that that grind in other people i really admire it i respect it um and uh yeah man and as far as links and shit man just any you go i mean if you're watching us on youtube my ig <laughs> Five four one six. Go to link in bio. My link tree's there, and literally everything is there. Anything that you ever need from me, that is of any importance, is in there. Whether it's album links, streaming links for singles, YouTube versions, music videos, um, the interviews that I regard very highly, like my biggest yeah. interviews, I even drop the links in there on my link tree. If you want to just check out my media shit because you think I suck at rapping, that's all gravy too, baby. You know, different flavors for different haters. Breaking Records Radio, that's W-R-E-C-K-O-R-D-S. That's how we spell it. R W R E C K all day. Breaking Records Radio. And uh, you can go in there. The link tree in there has literally links to all of the interviews. The Breaking Records Radio YouTube page, spelt the same way. Go subscribe. The Breaking Records Radio Clips YouTube page. We're trying to get that one monetized too, so... Go subscribe to that, help a brother out. And I even dusted off my old personal YouTube page and started uploading <clears throat> just some like extra bonus content and some cool different stuff. Um, and we're close to getting that monetized too. So that's MLMY slash Maloney, um, youtube.com slash Malarneth Maloney. That's the old YouTube name. And I, I haven't figured out how to scrub the link of that yet. So um, that's the link. But uh, yeah, go subscribe to me on there too. All my behind bars end up on there. Um, and just some other cool content and stuff. I'm going to start dropping. I have dropped some exclusive music videos on there. I'm going to drop more. You know, MLNY on Spotify, any streaming platform, whatever you use. Go find me. Check it out, man. We got records this year, man. I dropped records. I got, I'm got. i on records with Gmo, Ski, Evil, Ebenezer, fucking um, me and Prada got the new EP. Me and Confidential, numerous records. Mocha only, Bizarre, fucking, you know, uh, shit, man. Uh, There's C a lot out there to pee. And self-titled, we got we got records out. Then this is all just this year, let alone the back catalog. Yeah. Um, we got a record coming out with Craig G coming very soon, and like in about a month or so, we got the remix to the the Mocha Joint coming out. Um, I just uploaded it through distribution today. Um, there's lots and lots and lots of dope, good music coming, and some of the other features I mentioned before, and uh, albums and right. projects, and other things. So stay tuned, man. Just follow me up wherever wherever's clever, you mm -hmm. know. And when this is uploaded onto YouTube, all the links and stuff that you have, I'll be provided in the description. So, again, Perfect. episode 110. I'm your man, Hanley, from On The Line With. Diamonds Rising is the sponsor. Shout out to Maloney, MLNY. Thank you for coming on. Yo, and, uh, we'll talk. We'll nah. chop it up again soon, bro. Yo, 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 yo. Let me just shout out the Break and Record Squad, too, before this cuts off. Shout out to Innocence, Devious Dreams, Nails, Scott Free, the new member, Jack Craven, Chris Thomas, Chayman. Reaper. I hope I didn't miss nobody, man. One love. Peace, brother.